In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the pop-up pop -up form and the Ajax form helpers, and also the render view controller extension. So for the pop-up, there is the pop-up action link helper, pop-up action link. We're gonna give a link text of uh, open and the content hard, also position uh, top and height 100. Another option is to use the URL helper and uh, I'm going to use it inside the HTML button tag. Let's use on click, content hello and let's put the text of the button, click me. Ok, now let's run this. So let's open the pop-up. So as you can see opening one pop-up closes the other one. This is because they have the same name, so let's specify a different name. Name P1. Save and uh, refresh. So now these pop-ups are independent. They have different names. Opening one will not close the other one. Besides specifying static content, we can also specify the URL to an action from where the content is going to be retrieved via Ajax. So let's first create an action from where we are going to retrieve our content. Say hello, add a view. Let's make sure it, it doesn't use a master page. And say hello, this content was returned via Ajax. Okay, and here delete content and instead specify URL. URL action say hello. Save, build and refresh. Now if you click here, this content was uh, returned via Ajax. The pop-up form is used to post the uh, form via Ajax. And in order to demonstrate how it works, I'm going to create a little uh, guestbook here. So let's create our model uh, message. And let's create a list. I'm going to create a static uh, list of uh, messages. Let's add a few default messages. New message. Let's return our model. And let's use it. Let's make our uh, view strongly type to so, uh, enumerable of message. And I'm going to use an unordered list. So list item user said text. Save and build. And uh, let's see our list. So the list is here. Let's use our pop-up form. We're going to create an, uh, a create action. Actually two actions. One for get and one for post. So this is the get action and this is the post action. When the model state is invalid, like if user or text is uh, null or empty, and the model state will be invalid, so we're just going to return the view with the message model as it was. But if it's valid, we'll add a new message and return an empty JSON object. So now let's create the view. So this is going to be our form, just the label, editors and the validation messages. We don't need a submit button because the pop-up form is going to have one. Let's add a create button. I'm going to click pop up form action and the URL, uh, URL action create. Okay, save build and let's see how it works. So we get our pop up. This is the submit button and cancel button. Okay, as you can see, the server validation works. And let's try and add something. Okay. If you refresh the page, so as you can see, the item was added. There's an option refresh on success. So now let's see. So basically, the page is refreshed 
automatically after the success. Another thing that we can do is assign a JavaScript success function to the pop-up form. So I'm, do, I'm going to delete this uh, refresh on success and do that in SF. Let's create it. So this function will receive as a parameter the JSON object that, that was uh, returned by the post function. So I'm going to return something like content equals I'm going to do a string format zero set one um, message user message text okay and we'll get this object we'll get it here so let's put here an ID list use it here list uh, and all that content so basically when the post action will uh, return a JSON this will be considered a success and uh, the pop-up will close and this function will be executed and the JSON that was sent will be sent here so we'll have the content. Let's save, build and refresh here. Now let's try it. As you can see now it's uh, the success JavaScript function is executed. And now we're going to create the same create functionality but using the Ajax form. So first I'm going to copy these two actions and uh, create another one. I'm gonna name it create2. And uh, also I'm going to copy the view and rename it to create two. And inside the view I'll, I'll remove the form. Because this view will be inside the form that I'll put on the index view. So let's write the form. And we are going to give a class to this form. Let's call it my okay. and inside the form I'm just going to render the create to action so create two and now let's use the Ajax form helper this will make the forms uh, with the class my to be submitted via Ajax Fill form and content set to true will make it refill its content whenever the response from the server is going to be a string, not a JSON. And let's also use a success function. And the success function is going to be the same, just like the one, the one from the pop-up form. Okay, let's save, build, and let's see how it works. We've forgotten to add the submit button. Let's add it. Okay, save, and refresh. Okay, I. So, it works. Let's see the server validation. Works as well. Let's put here a line break. Okay. And now we are going to add the uh, unobtrusive uh, client side validation. So, let's include. JavaScript files. Uh, first, let's make sure we have it enabled in uh, webconfig. So it's enabled. Now, in the layout, we have to add the jQuery validate script and the jQuery validate on obtrusive. I'm going to copy them from the MVC demo, awesome demo, and do obtrusive. And also because uh, the unobtrusive parsers is called undocument ready, the forms that come via Ajax will not be parsed. So we need another thing, which is this line. 
this uh, registers whenever an AJAX request completes, the unobtrusive validator will parse the document. So we also need this thing. So let's make the document ready. Okay, so now, now everything is going to work. Another thing that is needed is uh, this line, which uh, tells the jQuery validate to consider the hidden inputs. Because by default in version 1.9 the hidden inputs are not validated. So let's save and uh, let's see how it works. So the client side validation works. As you can see, you can look in the firebug. Whenever we click submit, no Ajax request is submitted. So, okay, now it works. And one more thing, as you can see, we used here a basic string creation in order to create some HTML. And this is okay for a small amount of HTML, but when we have some complex thing, then it's gonna be a bit hard. So what we can do is uh, we're going to create a view and render it here. So let's create a view item. I'll just copy this one and rename it. Uh, we're gonna give it a model. The model will be the message. Model message. Okay. And here we do the same thing that we did using the string format. User said model dot text. And here instead of using string format, we are going to render that view using the render view controller extension this render view we need to import awesome okay the view name item and let's give it a model which is the message and let's do the same thing for create two okay also, it's important to know that if we have here something like view data and uh, OK, like this, this view data is going to be available in the item view when we render it using render view. So this might be useful sometime. OK, let's uh, save build and see how it works. OK, so let's try another something. So it works the same. We can have a very complex view and it's going to be rendered and uh, submitted via Ajax in here. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.